Although Proxmox VE ships with a lot of CPU types, you can still run into issues. For instance, I have servers with older Intel CPUs that support AVX, but not AVX2. In addition, I have a mixed CPU cluster. As a result, I've been using the default x86-64-v2-aes CPU so I can still do live migrations. The only problem, for instance, is if you want to use MongoDB 5.0 or above, the CPU needs to support AVX and this one doesn't. Fortunately, you can create custom CPU types to resolve this, but how do you create your own custom CPU type in Proxmox VE? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, the first thing to do is to check that the CPU on the host does actually support the feature that you're looking for. And in my case, I need support for AVX or advanced vector extensions. So I could SSH into the server, or in this case, what I'm going to do is to open up a shell session instead. So I'm just going to click on shell, then play this information out. Then what I'm going to do is to query the actual CPU information on this computer, but I'm going to filter it out using grep. So grep avx slash proc slash cpu info comes back with a lot of information, basically a lot of repetition in this case. What I've got essentially is lines like this that begin with flags and it's got all the information about the flags that the CPU is advertising here, but specifically in there we've got AVX. But to be fair, I know that it supports AVX simply because it's actually come back with some output. So to give you some perspective, if I go over to this virtual machine instead, just connect into this one, then I'll do the same thing on this one here, because I know this one here doesn't actually support AVX. So if I do grep AVX and then slash proc slash CPU info, I don't get any output at all. There's nothing in there with AVX. Now, I could have made a typo, for example, and I know this CPU that's been assigned uh, to the hardware for this virtual machine does support AES. So if I hit return now, you'll see I'm actually getting output because there's our AES. So this for me is a dilemma because the CPU on the host supports AVX, but the CPU type that I'm using on the virtual machine here doesn't. And this is a pretty old CPU that I've got in computers like this. They'll support AVX, but they don't support AVX2. So I can't take advantage of the newer CPU types available within Proxmox here, which means I can't easily pass over that AVX capability to virtual machines. And that's why you end up creating your own custom CPU types. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that I've only checked one actual server in the cluster. You need to go through all of the servers, specifically if you're going to be running a virtual machine on multiple servers. So for example, maybe I have high availability set up. Maybe I just want to be able to do migrations from uh, one server to another. The problem is if you set up a CPU type for a virtual machine, that works on one host, but doesn't work on another because maybe that server doesn't support that feature set. Well, the virtual machine won't actually run on the other computer. So that's something to bear in mind. So ideally you want to be able to go through all of these servers first, just make sure that you all support the actual feature that you're looking for first. Now, in order to create your own custom CPU type or model, you need to store the information in a specific file. So I could SSH into this server, or as I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up a shell session instead. Just to clear that information out. Now, I'm just going to use nano, but 
file we're interested in is cpu-models.conf and that's in slash etsy slash pve slash virtual dash guest now i haven't actually defined any um, custom cpu models at all yet so in this case because we don't get an example file we're going to be creating it from scratch now this is where you would store all of your own custom cpus they would all start with cpu dash model call on then the name that you want to give this cpu it's entirely cosmetic it's really just whatever makes sense to you basically but i haven't used anything older than version 8 in a long long time when it comes to proxmox ve and what i do know is whenever i create a new virtual machine this is the cpu that actually gets assigned to the hardware so x86-64-v2-aes i want the same capabilities as that plus support for avx so that's why i've given it that name now the lines that follow corner of the documentation are options and you have to indent them either with one tab or multiple spaces at the very least we have to define flags otherwise all your cpus are going to be the same anyway now when it comes to this cpu if i interrogate that within a virtual machine for example these are the extra things i get told about so there's there's basically like a sort of like a baseline of capabilities that would be exposed you then got to tell it well what other features do you want to expose and i know these ones here will show up for that specific cpu so that's why i'm adding them here i also want support for avx so i'm adding in avx and xsave now the reported model by default is kvm64 there's a big list uh, that you can pick something i might think about experimenting with that's why i'm including this line but one thing to bear in mind is that this has an impact on Proxmox itself when it comes to um, live migrations, which is why I'm sticking to what the documentation says is the default of KVM64. It might have an impact on the guest operating system in terms of things like licensing, software capabilities, uh, driver selection, and so on. We've then got the hypervisor vendor ID. Well, for me, it's going to be Proxmox. Uh, so I'm just going to put that in. So that's more for my own peace of mind than anything. But there are two of the ones that I don't see any point in changing them. And so I'm not including them. One of which is a hidden uh, option, which decides whether to hide the fact that this is a virtual machine from the guest operating system. By default, it doesn't. In this day and age, I don't think it really matters, at least for most situations. So I'm just going to leave it on that default setting don't really see any point in changing it there's then another one which is the address space which decides how much of the address space of the cpu gets exposed to the virtual cpu i don't want to touch that it it has the potential to break live migrations for example especially if you've got different cpus and what i found is if i use that model it really makes no difference when i use my own custom model the result is the same when i go and uh, query the cpu that i get within that guest operating system the information i get back is always the same anyway so yeah that's just something i just don't see any point in changing so i'm leaving it out but again it's an option it's up to you what you want to include so for me this is enough information so i'm going to save this file now the good thing is it's going in slash etsy slash pve so if we go over to this server here, what I should find, let's clear that section out there. When I use nano to look for that file on this server, et voila, there it is. In other words, it's in slash Etsy slash PV, so it automatically gets replicated across. So I don't have to create this on every host. It's just gonna be a one-off creation, then it gets replicated. And the good thing about that is it means that any virtual machine on any of my hosts could potentially use that specific um, CPU model that I've created. Now, go over to the hardware of this virtual machine that I've got here. You can see that it's got 
x86 64 v2 aes as the cpu so if i want to switch this over and give this virtual machine uh, the capability to use avx what i can do is change the processor so I'll click edit we'll click on the drop down menu and there's like a lot <laughs> i mean a lot yeah there's a lot there's even quite a lot of quemu ones uh what i understand i mean there's our default reported model um, that we've got there there's these ones as far as i'm aware are the older versions these are the newer versions if you will but there's the one that we're using at the moment and the good thing is when you create these custom cpus they go right at the end of the list and it, it says it's a custom quembu um, vendor type but there's our name there so even if you forget what the name is it's going to be right at the end of the list so it's going to be a lot easier to pick it out so i'll select that click ok now when it comes to Proxmox, the processor isn't hot pluggable, so I can't just go into the operating system, uh, reboot it, and lo and behold, we've got a new processor. Instead, what I'm going to have to do is to actually shut down the actual virtual machine, then start it back up, and then it'll pick up the fact that it's now got a newer CPU. So then, moment of truth. Will our virtual machine here be able to take advantage of AVX in this case? Well, it is back up and running, and the warning that the processor has been changed is now gone. So if we go into the console session here, we can interrogate the CPU and find out what uh, flags it now has. So grep AVX slash prop slash CPU info. So this time we're getting our output because it is our AVX flag. And you'll see the other ones we've had before, like SSE4, um, AES. But what that means now is that this virtual machine now sees AVX as an option, meaning any software that has the potential to take advantage of AVX can now use that. And I know that for certain because I've used this specific model on other actual virtual machines that I run that have MongoDB. Now, without this, they couldn't use version five onwards. If you try to spin that up, it just refuses because the CPU wasn't giving it access to AVX and you do have to have that, that version of Mongo and the much newer versions. So for me, that has fixed quite a bit of a dilemma. Better still, it's giving me access to software, which is now up to date and more secure. Ideally, you would be better off setting the CPU type to host on a VM. This lets a VM take full advantage of all CPU capabilities and this can boost performance. But in a mixed CPU environment like I have, that would break live migrations. In my case, my oldest servers can't take advantage of x86 64v3 or x86 64v4. But now that I know about custom CPUs, I can take advantage of AVX.